What's up you guys, Tech Checker here, and I've got a review for you of the NECA Predator Ahab Ultimate Edition figure. Now this is super cool. This is the exact figure I have been wanting to get for the longest time. The only other NECA Predator figure that I've wanted more than this is the Elder Predator, and this one's pretty darn close to that one anyway. But I saw it at my Target the other day. I absolutely had to pick it up. I'm so excited, so let's go ahead and crack this thing open and take a closer look. All right, before we get into the actual review, I just wanna show a quick note so that when you're opening yours, you don't make any of the same mistakes that I have made with these because the way that NECA has packaged these, oops, that'll just come out. The way that NECA has packaged these is you uh, need to slide their legs out of the plastic so that you don't scratch them. Now this one's not nearly as bad as the Fugitive Predator because the Fugitive Predator had actual individual holes for the legs. This one, just lean them forward and pull them out. Easy peasy, you're good to go, you're not gonna have any scratching. All right, let's jump right on into the articulation. There are a few problems and we'll note those as we go along, but his head is on a ball peg and he actually has a really, really good range of motion. He can look up that far, which is, I, honestly, I don't even know how that's possible. Maybe it's a double ball peg. He's able to look down only about this far. It's a little disappointing, but you know, with how far up he can, look i'm still just pretty impressed with that we'll leave that off he has good tilt oh my gosh look at the tilt on that that is amazing and then he also has good side to side motion his shoulders are on a ball hinge and he this is where it gets a little bit limited he can go up about that far he probably could go all the way around, but here's one of the issues that I have. This shoulder pad is actually attached to the shoulder, and because of this little hose, you can only move it a little bit. That is something, I mean, sculpt-wise, they should have done a little bit different. I love that the hoses are there, but it limits on that side. Now, this side is fine. He can get his arm up and down without any real issues. He does have an upper bicep swivel. Again, this hose is gonna get in the way. So just be careful that you don't go too far with that. And then he has double jointed elbows. Those work pretty well. Again, on this side, there's a hose. Be careful that you don't go too far. This side is just fine. Um, and his arms look a heck of a lot better than the Fugitive Predator one. Though these, uh, the bottom parts of the elbow, I'm not super impressed with the way that looks, but it is what it is. He does have a swivel at the forearm. Come on, focus, there we go. He has a swivel on the forearm, that works pretty good. In the wrist, he has a peg joint with a hinge, and those work really, really good as well. Moving into the torso. So the torso, he has the same, uh, what I believe to be is double ball pegs at the top and bottom of the torso, but it is a little bit limited. He's only able to crunch forward about that far, and he's only able to arch his back about that much. You throw in the waist swivel, or the waist into that, which it's really pretty limited on mine. He doesn't get a lot of range of motion, but I'm still pretty pleased with it. He is able to rotate at both of those joints, not all the way, it does kind of stop up here, but he is able to continue, so you've got full range of motion there. And then there is a li little bit, you know, decent amount of crunch side to side, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Moving down into the hips, he's got T-jointed ball joints in the hips, and unfortunately, this little skirt fur piece is a little bit uh, more rigid than a lot of the other NECA figures usually are. So he can only do about that much for the splits, which is disappointing. He is able to kick forward only about this far. Again, we're getting into some of the material getting in the way. So there are some issues with that. And same with kicking backwards. He really can't get very far. So you're not gonna get super dynamic poses out of him with that. There is an upper thigh swivel right at the ball. That gives you a little, you know, a decent amount of range of motion there. In the knees, he's got double jointed knees. Those work really, really nicely all the way pretty much 
in half. There is no swivel like uh, a lot of the NECA figures have, so just be aware of that. There is no boot cut, and in the ankle there is a ball peg, and it's really, really limited. You're only going to get his foot back that far. You're only going to get his foot forward that much, which is not very good, and then the ankle rocker is also pretty darn limiting. So overall, the articulation is, you know, it's okay or great in some areas. In the head, he's got awesome articulation. The rest of the body, it's a little limiting. All right, let's talk sculpt and paint because that's where NECA really, really does a great job. And they did an amazing job on the head sculpt of this figure. I just love it. I love that he's missing one of the little mandible teeth things. You see, you can see this one here is there, and this one is missing for whatever reason. He's also missing an eye, which is really, really cool. You can kind of, at if you get in at the right angle, you can see there is his eye underneath there, which is pretty darn sweet. I really, really like this. They did an amazing job, again, with the paint and the sculpt. There's so many little details, and then they've got nice paint shading throughout, which I just love. I love how NECA does that. This necklace thing with the uh, the skull is painted awesome. It's got some nice dry brushing. The, the sculpt is really, really cool. Just be careful because the string part is very, very thin, and I would hate for that to break. Again, these hoses, be very careful about those hoses so that they don't pop off. And like I noted before, there is another one that connects from the upper uh, bicep or I guess tricep, and then down to here. So just be careful that you don't break that off. I do want to note on the uh, the hair hose things, these are fairly, you know, nice and soft, so they're not going to get in the way, which is cool, but I really like this little, I don't know what it is, some sort of a hair clip thing that's keeping these together. That's a cool little detail that you know, on the back of the figure, a lot of a lot of companies don't necessarily worry about the back of the figure, but I think it's cool. I like this little cape thing. It's kind of a real thin red material. You can you probably can't see it here. Um, probably right here you can see. It's very thin, so you're gonna see through it. But it, it's got to be thin so that it can lay a little bit more naturally. The only thing I don't really care for is these little string things, and I get what they were trying to do to give it a little bit of a, a texture fold look but they could have done that maybe even just with like ironing it or maybe even some wire would have been kind of cool. But these little strings, they're kind of sticking out. They just kind of look a little off. But throughout the rest of the figure, I mean, there's a lot of really cool detail. You can see on his back, they've got some really nice detail with some good, good dry brushing. I just think that they did a really, really great job. One thing I had noted before is the, the look of the joints can be a little off-putting. It's a little ugly. You know, as soon as you open it up, it's got this bright kind of yellowish color. So that kind of stands out, but I can totally get past it because the rest of the figure is so, so cool. The other thing that I want to note about the knees is I don't know that I care for the placement of the knee pad. Maybe it could have been a little bit higher. I mean, it would have hurt the articulation, but I don't know, just something of it just is a little bit off when you bend his knee all the way. But again, that's a little bit nitpicky. I'm not going to get too, you know, bent out of shape about that. I really like these feet. They're really big. They give you a good base. This is one thing that just bugs me a little bit, although I guess it's supposed to be kind of like a sandal, so I guess I can't complain too much. It just, it looks a little off when you look at the bottom and you see just this black kind of, I don't know, lame looking thing. So overall, paint and sculpt, really, really good job by NECA as usual. All right, let's go ahead and measure this guy up and see just how tall he is. And he's coming in at right about eight and an eighth inches tall. Pretty good size for a NECA figure. Let's do this side-by-side -side comparison between the Ahab and the Fugitive. And I was right. He is, the, the Fugitive is considerably taller, at least considerably taller than this one. Now I know that he's likely a little bit of an older character, I guess. So I don't know, but you look at the, the proportions right now and I'm definitely not loving the proportions on this guy. This guy looks amazing. I, I just, I love the way he looks. Let's go ahead and for the sake of consistency, let's throw Deadpool in 
and see how he compares. Now, obviously, these guys are towering over Deadpool, and I don't know why you'd be putting your Marvel Legends in with your NECA Predator figures, but if you wanted, this is kind of the scale you're gonna get out of them. And last but not least are the accessories. I hope you've got some popcorn. Sit back, relax. There are a lot of accessories that this guy comes with, and I mean a lot, especially compared to the Fugitive. This guy comes with a ton. First up, he comes with a mask piece that just goes on his head. Now, normally, we, uh, or a lot of the times, we'll get a figure with um, just an alternate head. This guy just has this piece that pops right on. It actually looks really, really good. It works really well. It stays on pretty decent and it's painted really nicely. You can see his little mandible underneath there. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I think that this was a good choice. Uh, that way then they can give us all of these other accessories that they threw in here that we didn't get with the fugitive. So he comes with a set of alternate hands, one for each side so that he can hold some of his weapons. And we'll look at those in just a second. Let's actually go ahead and put these alternate hands on now. All right, before we get too far into this, one other thing that I wanted to note that I hadn't already noted is this piece opens up so that he can have his little uh, communicator thing or whatever. So that's really, really cool that they uh, did that and it actually looks like there's an LCD or LED type of screen. There's some nice paint apps there, which is awesome. So I also wanted to show you this. This is his claw. Uh, metal blade thing and these pop in and out. I don't know if I really care for this one They don't stay in position all that well. So that I don't know That's just kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a bummer and he comes with an alternate one that has three blades Which is pretty cool now. It would have been awesome if we could have put this one on this side But I get it. He's got the communication the calm thing so you get a three blade or a two blade and mine just came apart, but that goes back pretty easy. So we got that, we get the extra hands, but we're not done. We also get this, uh, I don't know, it's some sort of a disc blade sort of thing, and I believe it fits in this hand, if I'm not mistaken. So he can either hold it like that, or I wonder if he could hold it the other way as well. I bet you it's supposed to go this. No, no, it would go this way. So that that's pretty cool. I, I don't, somebody in the comments let me know what this specific thing is. I really just don't recall what it is. I'm gonna try and get the, that to focus in right there. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, that looks really cool. It's painted very nicely. I like it. Always like it when they give you extra stuff. And we're not done. We are not done. How is this? I mean, normally we'd be done. But he also comes with this head and spine. Now this is a giant head. I mean, it's really big. So I don't know if this is actually human or if this is what their skulls, their, this can't be what their skulls would look like because there's other pieces. So this is really, really big. Feels a little bit like it could be too big, but uh, for scale, for what a human would be, but you know, he could hold this. It's very reminiscent of the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat one too. But this, there is no articulation on it. So it's not like the head can move or anything. Really, really nice paint apps. There's some nice dry brushing, which looks really, really cool. He comes with his shoulder cannon. Now this is really cool. Sometimes their mounting systems are a little bit not great. This one's actually not bad, but you do have to use a little bit of pressure to get this to pop on. So basically you tab it in on his back and then you just slide it into the tab up on the top of his shoulder. And it, it just, it feels like it might, it feels a little precarious. That's, I'll just say that. Oh, that popped off. I never did show you how these go on. Basically they just, you just slide it in. It's basically tabs. So you can just tab those in and I'll just leave it off. That way then it doesn't fall off. But yeah, basically he's got his shoulder cannon and this is somewhat articulated, not a lot. Let me just make sure that I'm not going to break it. It's on a ball peg so that it can turn and you can't really move it forward that much, but you know, it works. It's, I think it's a little bit better 
than the fugitive one. It's not so tiny and, and seeming like it's going to break. So I really, really like that. Very cool. But again, we are not done. He comes with this gun. It is huge and it's really cool. I, actually, I think it's held like that. Here's the trigger. That thing is absolutely monstrous. It's really, really cool. I just I just really love this thing. It looks so cool. They've got a little bit of paint uh, dry brushing throughout. It's just the, the sculpt work. I don't know if you'll be able to see with my lighting, but they just did a really, really nice job. It looks so good. He also comes with his spear, which is so big, I, you can barely get it on screen. But this thing is painted really, really nicely. They've got the gold here. That looks really good. There's not really any other paint throughout, so I kind of misspoke about the paint, but it is relatively flexible, so he, you know, you're not gonna break it too easily, but he can hold this thing. Let's throw this thing in here so you can see what he looks like holding it. Maybe we'll use the other hand just for the sake of getting this done quick. All right, there we go. So he can hold his spear. How cool is that? But there's one last thing to show you with this. And it's basically he's got storage for this thing. So it's this tiny little clippy thing. See if you can see that there. And that goes into a slot on his back. So if you move the cape out of the way, come on, pop that in. And now you can have storage for his spear on his back. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But yeah, that's pretty cool to be able to have storage. I mean, it. I, I can imagine that it might not be super awesome, that little, uh, that little clippy thing, but with all the accessories that we get, especially compared to the Fugitive, I got this at Target. It was like $27.95 or whatever their regular price is. With tax, it was about $30 and some change. Compared to the Fugitive one, this one is an absolute must have with all the accessories he comes with. And he just looks more aesthetically pleasing. I don't know, it's just, it's a must have if you have the choice between Fugitive Predator or Ahab, get this one. I would highly recommend you get that one. It is such a great value with the accessories that you get. It's just an amazing figure. So let me know in the comments below, do you have either of these figures? Which do you like more? I'm gonna guess most people are gonna say they like Ahab a heck of a lot better because there's so many more accessories and it's just a much better figure. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Again, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you later.